There's a 37-year-old woman missing named Cassie Catherine Carley. She's a mom to a little four-year-old girl named Sailor. And Cassie went missing on Sunday, March the 27th from a small little Florida town called Navarre Beach. The FBI has now joined the search. Cassie is five foot five inches tall and 150 pounds. She has blonde shoulder length hair and blue eyes. She has pierced ears and a mole on her right cheek. She also has a tattoo of a tribal mark on her lower back and a little lizard on her foot. Cassie just started a new job the day before on Saturday, March 26th at, at the Air Force Base. Her sister Rianne said, she was in the middle of starting a new job on base being a lead server. Saturday evening was the last time she texted me, but she said it just went well. Cassie was living back with her dad in Navarre as she was in between jobs and said to be getting back on her feet. And there was some custody issues that she was working on with her daughter's father. His name is Marcus Spanavello, and they had joint custody. Now, the night she went missing, she was supposed to meet Marcus and Sailor for a custody exchange. That was a regular thing. Marcus had Sailor for his weekend, and they would do this every other weekend. Now, the only difference in this particular weekend was the location of where they would meet. It was a last minute change, according to Cassie's sister, Rayanne, and it was just down the road from where Cassie and Sailor lived. And investigators believe that Marcus was the last person to see Cassie. So we're going to take a deeper look at the timeline and the details. Let's get into it. On Sunday, March 27th at 7 p.m., Cassie's at home with her dad. And she says to him, hey, I'm going to go and pick up Sailor. I'm going to meet Marcus at Juana's Grill. And she said she'd be right back. And Juana's is said to be about one mile away from where they lived. But this was the last minute change in plans. Usually they did meet at a public location like a Walmart where it's well lit. Cassie used to live in Destin, Florida and Marcus lives currently in Panama City. Now that Cassie lives in Navarre, they chose Walmart in Destin to go meet up, except for this one evening. Marcus started changing the meetup locations, it was said. And that night they met at Juana's. Cassie's sister describes Juana's and she said, Juana's, it's a local bar that she, it's always been there. So a big parking lot and people using the boat ramp, usually a nice public place. My dad said it was just a very brief, you know, be right back, dad. I'm just, just going right to Juana's. But Rayanne said that Cassie felt extremely unsafe around Marcus and she seemed to be very nervous. Her dad would sometimes accompany Cassie for the custody exchange. Now, according to authorities, they said that the area that she was in, that parking lot, was very dark. And at 9.40 p.m., Cassie's dad texts her. Cassie, I'm trying to call you, what's going on? I'm freaking out, Cass, call me as soon as you get this message. And Cassie's phone responds back. I'm sorry, car was acting up and I broke my phone. Marcus is working on it. I will stay at his place tonight. He is paying me money to do some stuff around his house. Her dad says, are you in PCB? Meaning Pensacola Beach. Cassie's phone says, no, the screen is jumping all over the place. Let me see if he can get this fixed and I'll call you. Rayanne talked about this message and she said, the text messages my father received from Cassie's phone were nothing of typical speak my sister would have said especially the claims of car and phone troubles at the same time. She would have walked to the nearest gas station if she had to before getting Marcus for any type of help in a situation like that. Now Cassie's dad falls asleep, wakes back up. There's still no sign of Cassie or Sailor. He starts calling Cassie with no answer and then he goes back to sleep for the night. On Monday, March 28th, he wakes up and he contacts Marcus no answer. But then Marcus texts Cassie's dad and said, yeah, Cassie was having troubles. I was going to help her with her phone, but she ended up getting all upset and acting crazy. Now, according to a friend of Cassie's named Sam Porter, Marcus lied to Cassie's father about dropping Cassie off at Sam's place. Now at 4 p.m., Cassie's dad calls Rayanne and Cassie's father then reports her missing by the evening. Loved ones and neighbors gathered in the community and they started searching for Cassie. Sam Porter tells the news, I am very hopeful Cassie is a fighter. There are a lot of prayers going up for Cassie right now. Now, Tuesday, March 29th, 
There's a text that comes in from Rayanne to Marcus at 9.16 a.m. And Rayanne says, is Sailor with you? Please, Marcus, this is not like my sister. She has been doing great and was supposed to start a new job. I hope you will at least cooperate with the police. Let them know you have Sailor. She is now a missing person. Marcus responds saying, Sailor is with me. She wanted to be dropped off in the middle of nowhere in Destin with Sailor. I told her I wouldn't let Sailor go like that to give me an address and I'd take them to it. Yeah, cops already called me and might call again for more questions. If they do, I will. Apparently everybody will be asking me that. So I'll just copy and paste what I told your father. By 11 a.m., investigators found Cassie's vehicle still at Juana's in the parking lot, and it was said it was near a boat ramp. Her purse was left in the car, and all belongings were in it except for her phone. Carly's family believes it is possible that she left in Marcus's car, and the authorities said, what we found concerning was inside the car was Cassie's purse. And as you know, most women do not leave their purse behind when they go somewhere. So that caused us a little concern. There were things in the purse we don't think she would just up and leave. Usually you don't go four days without hearing from them or them using a credit card, cell phone. So yeah, we're concerned. He says, I've been married 32 years and I'll tell you, my wife goes nowhere without a purse. So to think she just left it there and walked off, that's what concerns us. Now, later that day, the sheriff's office made a post on social media asking for the public's help in locating Cassie. Also, there was a vigil that was held for Cassie on Tuesday evening, March 29th, where, the fr where friends gathered for Cassie's safe return. It was a candlelight vigil. And there's been no activity on her cell phone or credit card since she disappeared. Now, on Wednesday, March 30th, the day after the car was found, Sailor was found in Birmingham, Alabama with Marcus, which is a four hour drive away. CPS checked on Sailor and Marcus was interviewed by the authorities. When asked why he was in Birmingham, he told authorities that he traveled to Alabama to work on a job site. He was the last one to see Cassie. So the search now is expanded outside of Santa Rosa County. Now let's get into a little bit of Marcus's relationship resume. According to Cassie's brother, Anthony, he says, Cassie's been telling me for the last two years that Marcus has been threatening her. She's always said, if anything happens to me, it's him. Rayanne says, she's always in contact with her families and friends. Even during the exchange, she would have texted, our red flag was Marcus. And Cassie's close friend, Kirsty Sullivan says, Cassie wouldn't leave her daughter. The minute I knew she didn't have her purse, her phone, her car, her child, we knew. We know. We're just praying Marcus makes a good decision and we can find her. No one has been named a suspect at this time or has been arrested. Sailor is still with her dad and reports say that the family is going through the process of figuring out how to gain custody. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Sam Porter said that Sailor's dad, Marcus, spoke to Carly's dad and told him that he had dropped off Cassie at Sam Porter's home, but she said that's not true. Back to Marcus's resume. He is suspected as a violent abuser, it said. It says he has previously threatened to take Sailor out of the US. Sources said they fear that Carly and Sailor are in extreme danger, it says in August 2021, Carly's sister, Rayanne, created a GoFundMe to raise money for Carly's legal fees during her custody battle with Marcus. And in the GoFundMe, in the description, it says that there's alleged abuse that she suffered from Marcus. And she describes him as abusive and narcissistic and says he manipulated her throughout the relationship and her pregnancy before she ended the, pre the relationship after their daughter was born. And after the relationship ended, the abuse escalated. And what's also interesting is Carly said that he filed dozens of false police reports. He called CPS so many times I nearly came to know most of the staff by name. The passive aggressive abuse was so bad I had to trespass him from my apartment on more than one occasion. Also, Marcus allegedly withheld 
Sailor from Cassie in the past. It says, for over two weeks, I had no contact with my daughter or knowledge of her whereabouts. I called everyone I knew. I sought help from local police and every government agency I knew. No one could or would help me. My only hope was a powerful attorney who would not fall for his manipulation or believe his lies. Looks like there's some game playing here. The family said, just in general with her relationship with him, it has always been she has had some fear of him. He's always controlling and tried to be manipulative and she had some fear of him in the past and what he's capable of or planning maliciously towards her. We always had a red flag on him, always, and her as well. She wanted to remind us, if something happened to me, it's him. Now, the FBI is working on the case, and Crime Stoppers has a $3,000 reward so far. That's as of March 31st on Thursday. And the Escambia Search and Rescue also launched its boat to search and help on Friday afternoon. They use their technology to search the water for anything suspicious. The assistant director said that he asked the family of Carly's to come out on Friday. And he said, the more time that happens between when they get lost and when you go looking for them, the longer it is and the more likely it is that you won't find them. So lots of boots on the ground early on and a good last known location to start looking. We have better results than not. And organizers say that their main focus was between Navarre and Destin. Rayanne says, we are going to help bring her home wherever she may be. And Rayanne also is said to have talked to Gabby Petito's mom, Nicole Schmidt. She said, it's so nice to have that comfort from someone who's been there. And Gabby's family has the Gabby Petito Foundation and they're uh, committed to helping other people in these situations. Now, according to the sheriff, he said that there is about five or six witnesses that have come forward so far and said that investigators are still examining surveillance footage in the area. As the search continues and the community is helping, Rayanne called it amazing to see such support that the, compu- that the community has provided. She said, I'm overwhelmed by the help and the response we're getting. I'm not surprised though. And the police said missing person cases, a lot of them, you know, we find the person, everything's fine, but usually it'll go for days without hearing for, from them or them using a credit card or cell phone or something. And right as of now, we have none of that. So yeah, we're concerned and the way she has gone missing is of concern to the authorities. Now, one of the things I was reading is from Ray Ann and her dad, there was a phrase that they used saying, loving you always, and their father would say that to the girls. And Ray Ann says she's the biggest daddy's girl, my goodness, like the biggest. Ray Ann says, Cassie is so fun and outgoing and always laughing. We just know how to have fun and let loose. And if you're around us, especially her, She's always laughing and telling jokes. She also said she's always wanted to be a mom and she's born maternal for sure. The one thing that Rayanne said she wanted people to know, she says the number one thing I want people to know is she was in the best mental health and like physical health. And there was a cool thing about the tattoo that I mentioned earlier, the lizard tattoo. Rayanne has a lizard tattoo and so does Cassie. And the way it's shaped on their foot when they put their feet together, it actually forms a heart. And they also have L-U-A on that short for loving you always. And Rayanne said Cassie's full of life. She's so happy. Anyone who has been around her can just feel her energy. She has touched so many people, not just in our family. She is the glue in our family that's held us together. Anyone with information on Cassie's whereabouts is asked to call the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office at 850-983-1190. You can also call 911 or Crime Stoppers at 850-437-STOP. Now, one of the things that I've been thinking about as I've been researching this case is the phone. If Cassie leaves her purse in the car, right, she has her phone. Even if she gets into the car with Marcus, doesn't have her purse, which is weird, and then there's a text that goes out to Cassie's dad, and it was uncharacteristic according to Rayanne. Well, Sailor's with Marcus, and so... A few days would go by. My question is, did Marcus try calling anybody saying, hey, I have Sailor, I have to go to work, right? So there's a couple, well, there's quite a few red flags and oddities right now. We don't know the little teeny details in between so far, 
but it is really weird. And especially with the custody agreement, right? You have the 50-50, you have every other weekend. This is how it normally is. And she's going to pick up Sailor. And then, you know, two weeks after that, which would be next weekend, he would come and pick her up. So that's weird. And I wonder about the phone, right? So it's going to be interesting to find out about these phone pings. And this case has vibes a little bit, a lot bit. I hate to say it, but it is actually, it's a lot like Barry Morphew. Oh, all of a sudden I have a job. I'm not saying he's a Barry Morphew, but it just feels like, okay, all of a sudden she's gone and you're at a job, but you have your little girl. What are you doing with your little girl at your job site? Are you working? These are natural questions, right? I'm not pointing fingers at this moment. I'm just saying, you know, the thought process on that. If Sailor's supposed to be with her mom and her mom went crazy and went off and wanted to go to Destin, that, I mean, you know what I'm saying. It's weird. Let's have a chit chat below. We'll have a discussion. Let me know if there's something that you have heard. If there's more information that I didn't cover in this video, I'd very much appreciate it. It helps streamline things for me and makes it a lot faster so I can create videos for you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like, don't forget to share this out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.